I want to map this thing in, figure out where it is. Just a bit off center. Uh, you'll see I put my shadow in the wrong spot. Oops. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to be doing a painting of a weeping willow tree. Should be a little different, but a lot of fun. If you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here super simple. Just some yellow, literally just some yellow and white. I've already put just, a, I was right about here, up, put a little bit of clear gel and white just to allow my colors to fade and blend a little. No big deal. Just just a quick coat, nothing perfect or anything like that. Of course, you don't put any down here. Even though there's a little water, there's gonna be mostly land and I don't want that area slippery. This is really pretty. I want this to appear like, honestly, just like sunlight glowing through. Um, I wouldn't really call it a forest, really. It's gonna be one tree. A little bit of a background, not much. Not much. There, but obviously you can do whatever colors you like. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let me show you some of your paintings from the last video we did. I think everybody did really good. It's really fun to see each week your versions of my paintings. I think you're doing, everybody's doing fantastic. It's really fun to see. It really is. I can't tell you how, how much I've enjoyed doing this. So we'll definitely keep it up. Um, and if you'd like, you know, your painting to be featured in the next video, all you have to do is tag me using the hashtag on the screen. And I'll do my best to get as many of them as I can into the next video. Oh, you're doing your version of this painting. I guess I didn't mention that. <laughs> as you can see, I've got quite a few different colors mixed up here. I've just been splashing them in the background, a little blue, a uh, little blue and green, a little black, starting to get up into some of the warm tones. And this is really what I want to show you, those warm tones. Grabbing some of my yellow here, a little sap green. On the two inch brush, you could use the one inch, you could use a filbert brush. Two inch brush is what I already had in my hand, it was dirty, so why get another one dirty? You might as well just use this two inch brush, it's working so well. I'm just gonna use the corner and kind of, okay, we're gonna make up an art term here. We're gonna bobble it down. <laughs> Looks like, what else would you call it? I'm gonna bobble it down. <laughs> oh yes, look at this. What am I doing? I don't know, <laughs> making a big mess. Now. What I'm attempting to do is to create just a feeling of soft backlight. Soft backlight coming in through here. Not a, not a tremendous amount. I do want to see some of that background show through, but I think this is going to be really effective. There. Making small minor adjustments until it looks more and more the way you want it to look. That's about right. So I have a little darkness on this side. Lighter on that side, wipe out the brush. Hopefully this is, uh, hopefully this is fun. I can't wait to see your version. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been really, really enjoying this. All right. Let's see here. Let's see, that looks pretty decent. Yes, just get some of that all the way across. This willow it literally extends all the way across. There's another one actually over here, but you know, if you look at actual pictures of willow trees, they're not terribly solid, so I don't want to make mine too solid. This is a very classic scenario. They're always planted by these ponds. I believe this is like a, uh, maybe like a man-made pond or at least a maintained pond. It feels like it has that garden feel with that land that you're standing on. I think it'll be really cool. That's kind of what I'm going for. All right, make sure we leave. I don't want too much sky up here, actually. I want it to feel very much closed in along the top to draw your eye. That's just an art thing, to draw your eye in. That's where we're gonna be looking at the end of this painting. Now I'm just continuing here with a two inch brush to fill in this foreground. Kind of mapped it out already. See, it's good to start with your light colors in the background and you can work forward to the darker colors. That works right there. Pretty dark because this is all kind of in shadow from that tree anyway. The only thing I want is, maybe let me set that down, grab a filbert brush and maybe extend some of this because I think that's going to be light kind of filtering through. Let's just set that up right now. There, that works. Just spend the next couple minutes 
making this work. It may seem just a little early to be painting in the main tree. It probably is, <laughs> and I don't care. I want to map this thing in, figure out where it is, just a bit off center. Uh, you'll see I put my shadow in the wrong spot. Oops, we'll be adjusting that. Our, our main light source is right here, so that shadow is going to come more like that, somewhere in that, that area. All right, what do you think? Let's go right here. That looks decent. That looks decent. There's not too much paint in the background. You can tell this is definitely, definitely uh, slick. And we will definitely, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Sometimes I get to where I'm painting and not concentrating about what I'm actually saying. I kind of ramble, you know. My point is, we're going to most likely be taking a paper towel, shop towel, sticking it on there, absorbing that oil. If you don't know how to do that, check out that video we did a couple weeks ago where I showed you how to make your painting, honestly, exactly like a dry painting. Not quite dry, but so close. In 10 minutes or less, five minutes, something like that. Hmm, <laughs> sounds like a commercial. There we go, that's cool. Nice, oh, I love that. Hey, spend that extra minute, get this tree, the way you like it, because there's not much else in the painting. <laughs> there's actually, there's gonna be a tremendous amount of leaves. Oh, that's good, got good character. Look at that limb right there. Kind of a broken off spot, knots. And like I said, you know, maybe this is a planted and maintained tree. Maybe this has been trimmed. This is a little straight. Let's see, I got that straight limb. It will be kind of covered up. I don't want it to go too straight so i'm gonna make that one there we go just looping a few a few limbs around it makes a huge difference with very little effort actually just get your largest limbs in just like that a few that cross over kind of intersecting it's a very good very good thing not too many this is not an evergreen we don't need to see like a bunch of broken off branches or anything like that and while i'm here i'd love to just locate that tree trunk right here just to remind me that that i want it in there just a, another little willow tree, kind of kind of in the background will be covered with a lot of dark leaves on the top there. Now with the detail round brush, I'm gonna add in some of these leaves. This is very much like you would do you know, a comma stroke, except for I'm not doing commas. I'm kind of going more in a downward motion for obvious reasons. These willow trees that you hang down like this, it's a pretty good effect. There's many ways that I've done to paint willow trees and I'm not so sure that this is one of them I've done before. But I'm just playing around here, thinking maybe we can make this work. <laughs> just maybe. By, by having this backlit, I, I think this is really going to be pretty. These darker leaves, of course, go over, over all the branches. That's nice. We want it to feel fairly closed in, but not too closed in. Some, some sort of a balance. We'll find a balance in there. I don't think it needs to be super super detailed but i wouldn't want to like take a take a big brush you know like we've been using and try to fill all this in too quickly i think i would spend my time there's no big mountain in the background today but just spend your time here and get some of these really pretty details you can even kind of flatten out your your little detail brush or simply actually i had one going use a little uh, three quarter or one quarter flat brush or the three quarter i don't know we might try I'm going to probably experiment with different brushes to see what works best, just because I don't paint a lot of weeping willow trees. There. I know the fan brush is one really quick and easy way to do it, but I just wanted to try for a different effect today. If you'd like to try the fan brush and just kind of tap those little leaves in, that's fast and easy and I think you'll get a nice result. So you may want to try that if you don't feel like I'm doing it this way. That's pretty nice. I, I do want this all covered. This area really covered. Maybe a little openness here and then back to kind of cover it again. So super dark up here. There, that's nicer. See, that's starting to kind of close it in up there, make it a little bit mysterious. We'll have some larger ones from this tree, but they're like close to us here in the foreground. That'll be really interesting. Remember how I said I was uh, going to use the little detail brush and not the fan brush? It didn't last very long. <laughs> Let me tell you. Nothing can make you change your mind faster than painting thousands and thousands of those little strokes. So we're gonna use more of a combination method, quite a lot like we do when we do evergreen trees where I smash it in with the fan or filbert brush and then I refine it with the detail brush. That's more kind of the traditional way that I paint anyways. So I think it'll work out better 
I was going cross-eyed. <laughs> oh, I'm tell you what, we're weird enough around here without trying to paint 3,000 little brush strokes. There we go. Oh yeah, it actually gives a nice texture. This is a secondary texture in there that I think is, is nice. It works, you know? And a lot of that will actually be smoothed out anyways. There, that leaves a nice contrast though, doesn't it? Of those, those green leaves, dark leaves against the light areas. That's pretty. Nice, a little brighter over here, so lighten that dark color. Just maybe by wiping your fan brush out, grabbing a little more of this light color here. Just like this. Pretty good. Now, as you can see, I put very carefully some shop towels up here. This is just to absorb that that oil. While we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to work on the grassy areas here. There's a lot of the same colors happening. I guess that just kind of goes along with the feel of the painting, and I think that's an okay thing. Having said that, we may want to get some like blue or white flowers. I don't really know. Maybe not flowers. Maybe maybe some blue shadows or some cooler. I don't know. I just haven't figured it out yet. Maybe I won't do anything. I don't know. As we go away from this bright area, as you can see, I've just been tapping grass here. I'm going to tap with a darker color to create some really pretty uh, just variation in the painting. It'll look really nice that way. You can go crazy and you know make this grass as, as detailed as you like. I don't know that it matters a whole lot. You know, whatever you want is going to be just fine. Fairly low contrast, actually, between the water and this grass. Of course, we already did the grass properly by having it underpainted with a good tone that set us up for a little bit of success here without having to do any extra work. See that? You know what I mean? We have these we have these little highlights going on in the underpainting. And then you just add to those highlights and oh, good things happen. A little lay of the land there, you know, just to make it more interesting. Of course, this, this should actually look pretty flat, but you know, it's our painting. If we want to make it a little bit interesting, we can. <laughs> How's that? Good. And then as you work up, I like to change the stroke and use this fan brush in an upward motion to get some more larger, rougher grass textures, especially over here in the shadows. That would look really nice, I think. Yes, see that? Put those darker grasses, this is what I'm talking about, darker grasses right over some of that not so dark underpainting. Mm, nice. I'm not even worried about my little limbs that, that, that reach down here. We'll bring them back if we need to. There's your, your bush that'll stop your eye from flying off the side. That's good. That's, that's important to have, I think, in a painting like this, where there's not a whole lot going on. It's not so much that there's not a lot going on, it's just that there's not a lot of subject material. We got a tree that's just sitting out here. So it's how do you make that interesting? That's the, that's the trick. How do you make it interesting, but still simple? Because you don't want to overcomplicate it and lose that effect of, you know, why the painting is so pretty. Kind of that, oh, wow, um, punchy, you know, very punchy effect of it being like the only thing out there, just, just looking at this tree. You can tell there's a forest around it, but it's all out of focus. So, I don't know. Just, it's fun to think about these things, and it's fun to play around and, uh, and just see what happens, really. Now I can take this shop towel off. It's been maybe 10 minutes or so, and yeah, that looks really good, actually. You see, Number one, it's kind of flattened everything out a little, and it's absorbed a lot of that oil. It should pretty much seem, I'm gonna sacrifice my finger here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much dry. I mean, it, it's not dry. You see, there's a lot of paint come off, but it's certainly a lot stickier than it ever would be. All right, so here we go. So it acts like a dry canvas. Oh, I should have got out a little more sap green while I was doing nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Now up here I'd like it just a bit darker and I can just simply toss it in now. I tried to do that right here actually, right, right in the spot I'm painting right now. I tried to do that before I painted the grass and it was not coming off. It was, it was getting very muddy and I didn't want that. So that's when I decided to just stop because there's no disadvantage to stopping. Um, especially when you can do, you know, use up some of the time to, it didn't take all that time to do the grass, but 
some of the time to do the grass, you know? And even if you don't want to wait 10 minutes, you could wait three minutes. It would be better, a lot better than nothing. So there you go. If this was something like a foreground, I would just wipe it and be done. But when it's a tree, you have to, you have to leave it on there and just allow it, you have to allow it to soak out all of that, all of that extra oil. Because you don't want to destroy all these beautiful tiny things you built in there. Those would get pretty quickly removed if you went to scrubbing with a, with a shop towel trying to get all that paint off. There. Keep these small. I'm noticing that, you know, if you keep them a little smaller, it looks better. Don't want them to get too big. We will have a couple of big ones. The plan is to have a few big ones. We may even do those with the liner brush. So we will probably wait a minute on those. That looks decent. <laughs> Just a lot of the same, but it's worth it. It's not that repetitive. It's actually kind of fun. Now I'm gonna place on some highlight here to the right side of the tree. And honestly, you could kind of make it either direction. There's nothing that's super bright, you know what I mean? This, I made this side just a little darker and this side just a little brighter, but you could easily flip-flop it if, if that's what you like. So we'll just assume the light's kind of coming either back or across. This is definitely kind of backlit. That's the way it looks. So we're just going to roll with that. <laughs> I love this color. This is actually just a little yellow ochre and white and whatever mud. Maybe we'll look at that yellow there. And honestly, I think that it's a nice contrast um, very much kind of these green tones and then you have this punch of this yellow ochre this earthy tone that I think really works a lot of this is actually covered but we may need to put you know, I, I like it that way we may need to put the the branches back over again which is fine I don't think that's any any big deal hey this works look at that oh yeah I could bring that way down you know make this really interesting put that extra time in here to make it to make it really work there and you can see I've got uh, got some paper towels taking some of the oil out of the grass I've got plans just to make them a little brighter just I, I was loving the way that the tree looked I think I might just do a little more to the grass there's not much else to do <laughs> so might as well right yes it's that is what you got to do sometimes there's just on these simple paintings you got to just go back and keep working the same areas to really almost like finesse them right into position where they need to go make them very detailed and, and fit perfectly you know exactly how you imagine they should in your scene that's what we're doing nice look at that paying special attention to the little root system down here I like this see I'm just taking my time making it exactly how I want it. I like that warmth in there. Really, I hit a little red there, and that's nice because it counteracts the green. Now I'm working on probably the most important part of the entire painting, which is the blue shadows. Yes, I think it's the most important part. The reason is it helps to, to give quite a lot more uh, color variety and interest in a painting that purposely has one color, green and variations of that green, really, and then a little bit of red. That's it. And I think this blue is a, a very necessary, um, a very necessary thing that maybe would be easy to overlook. You'll notice one more thing, at least I think you'll notice. I went ahead and darkened the tree just a little. I noticed the more I highlighted, kind of the less I liked it. And, and I realized that's because I was losing that contrast. We have basically white back here and that black in the front here, it really is nice. And the more you highlight, the less you see that effect. So I actually ended up removing some of the highlight in the middle of the tree, just left it on that outside edge. And I like the, I like the look of that better. But this blue really is starting to make quite a difference. Of course, you don't want to overdo it. It does, it gets old fast, <laughs> we should say. But but definitely don't skimp out. Get in here, add enough to where you're happy with it, then stop. And of course, you know where to make those decisions, right? 
you don't make the decisions right here where I'm painting. You go back where you're standing <laughs> and, and, uh, and you take a look. Six feet away is, is a good rule, but three feet is fine. Anything, just get back from it and make those choices if you like it from back there, not from up here. Can't see it this close. That's nice. That's it. See that? Just a little globby, but that's kind of the, the nice part about it because it makes it a little different than, than, the, than the crunchy stroke of the fan brush. <laughs> there. Well, it just looks like that light's filtering through, doesn't it? I think that works. That definitely adds a little something, doesn't it? So you just, you can kind of start to see that light come through in a way that's just a little bit more, not a lot, but just a little more interesting. There, all right. We need to get the liner brush out. I think that would be, that would be excellent. I can't wait to see this thing come together. We've got some, we got some big leaves to paint and we're gonna be doing those, maybe. <laughs> the plan is with the liner brush. Let's see how those turn out. Now I've got the liner brush and I am adding in some very long, large leaves here. <laughs> Honestly, not a lot of experience doing this. I'm not gonna let that stop us. <laughs> uh, I'm taking this a little bit slowly, making sure that I'm getting the effect that I'm picturing in my mind. Uh, it's not, I don't know if it's, it's kind of subtle. It's not crazy. Get a little more oil here. Make that super, whoa, okay, you're not gonna see it. <laughs> you're just gonna have to trust me, it's super thin. I'm not feeling like getting paint on my feet today. <laughs> like that. This is kind of subtle, but I think that this is going to make a bit of a difference. Kind of just have a, an element of foreground. If you even notice it, who knows? It may not really show in the end product as much as I think it will. This is supposed to just look like larger foreground limbs. I'm guessing these are limbs, right? This would be a tree limb, as funny as it is. Okay, that's the generic idea. I'm noticing on these things that they should be probably a little, at least the stem would be a little more yellow. Bring a, a distinct stem. Actually, the stem makes it. Hopefully it looks just as, hold on, let me step back. Yeah, the stem really makes it. I can kind of, I can kind of see that that's a different element now. Um, of course, in changing the color, I've got a whole, a whole chunky bit of paint on the front there, but now I thinned it back down. Oh yes, makes a difference. Wow, that's great. So those are, those are our foreground limbs. And we'll probably do some on the other side as well. Just gives it a some depth. You know, those are way closer to us because we're kind of under the tree almost, if that makes sense. Let's do some on this side as well. And I think this, these actually might might end up really selling the selling the effect. Because they are going to be in the high contrast zone. See that? Oh yes. Even a little touch more contrast. I do like them a little more blue, a little cooler. Not that, uh, not that dark. We gotta kind of really be careful here. We don't want to go and mess this up. <laughs> there. Oh, that's pretty. I think I can work with that. Now, one of the last things that we're gonna be doing here is just adding on a few of these limbs, not too many, and you'll notice that my color is extremely light. It doesn't even look light, but it is. It's, look at that. Can you see? Yeah, here we go. It's like this mess right here is kind of what I'm using. I might even add a little, a little more white. Every, everything has been used on the liner brush. Oh, I'm about to get my thumb wet. Um, everything really has been used with the liner brush today. It seems just adding all the colors and the grass and then the trees doing those big leaves. There we go, that's pretty. Don't get carried away. You want this to feel like it's inside the tree, not, not on this front side, you know? You want it to be 
buried in the middle of the tree. So don't get carried away. You want this to, to only be poking through here and there. Maybe that's pretty good right there. Maybe, yeah, a little limb there. Kind of do something, yeah, something like that. Just to break up those areas is nice. All right, I think this works. Maybe kind of give it the indication of, you know, the, the weeping branch style like that. Kind of curve them down. Not all the time, sometimes. And maybe a branch or two, even on this guy in the corner that we, <laughs> we really didn't put much into. I think this painting would really benefit. I think we even talked about doing this from a couple of blue flowers. I'm just going to make this into a flowering bush here. I couldn't really decide until right now how to work this color in using flowers and kind of making it look good. I don't even have my palette right now. I think that's probably enough. I don't think wildflowers in the field make a lot of sense. I think a flowering bush makes more sense for this composition. I think that really works right there. If it feels a little bit disjointed, I'd just maybe just take a fan brush or something, just kind of just touch it here and there to kind of push it into the painting, kind of make it look like leaves or just textures, and I think that works pretty well right there. Yeah, I like that. All right, well, I think we're done, and I can't wait to see your version of this painting. So definitely tag me using the hashtag on the screen, and I'll do my best to put it in the next video. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.